Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining Trailhead Live today. My name is Mohit Shivastava. I'm a developer evangelist here at Salesforce. Today in this Trailhead Live session, we will deep dive into Salesforce connected apps. This is the part one of the series. Before I get started, let's look at the forward looking statement here. Please make purchasing decisions only based on current offerings of the product. All right, let's take a look at the agenda for today's Trailhead Live session. So today we're gonna to talk about what is connected app. Uh, we will take a look into difference between authentication and authorization. We'll explore single sign-on SAML 2.0. And then I'll explain you some use cases for the connected apps. And then I'll walk you through a simple demo of how to create a connected app in your Salesforce environment and then how to use that to integrate with external systems. Also, we will take a look at how developers can use connected apps and how admins can use to uninstall, install or block the access to connected apps. And then we will take a look at how can we access data with API integrations using the connected app and then I'll walk you through some of the key considerations when deploying the connected apps and then I'll leave you with some references. And then I'll leave you with some of the references. Okay, so let's get started. So what is a connected app? So connected app is essentially a framework that enables external applications to integrate with Salesforce using APIs and standard protocols such as SAML, OAuth 2.0, and OpenID Connect. We'll look into all these protocols shortly. So let's take some examples where connected app is used today. For example, let's say when you log into your Salesforce mobile app and see your data from Salesforce app, you're actually connect using connected app. Similarly, if you're using Salesforce CLI, the CLI leverages connected apps so that you can connect your local machine or the laptop to the Salesforce. Also, if you're familiar with Salesforce Workbench, if you're familiar with Salesforce Workbench, Salesforce Workbench leverages connected app to authenticate and authorize to Salesforce. All right, so before we begin, there are certain terminologies that we will have to understand. And once we are familiar with these terminologies, the connected app, settings will make more sense. So let's understand difference between authentication and authorization. So an authentication is essentially, you know, a user provides an identifier to signify the account they wish to access and enter login credential for the account. For example, if you are using Salesforce, you will be presented with login screen where you can enter username and password. Or let's say if you're using something like two-factor authentication, you will need a mobile authenticator, which will provide you a six-digit key. You enter those digits and log in. So essentially, credentials provided by the user are validated against credentials you previously registered during user provisioning. What is authorization? So authorization is, let's say, you know, when a user account is created in Salesforce, it is often necessary to specify what the account can do and what privileges it has. So an example could be, you know, when you create an account, you want to provide access to that account so that it can access data via web. Or you can provide access to the account so that it can access and manage your data in Salesforce. So let's look at OAuth 2.0. So OR 2.0 is a protocol that provides authorization solution. So you can actually go to this website or.net slash two to read further details about the OAuth protocol. We'll get into some details, but this website has a very good info around OR 2.0 protocol. Note that the protocol is industry standard protocol for authorization. So it not only applies to Salesforce, but also applies to most of the enterprise applications that you might have worked with. The OAuth 2.0 protocol enables an app to call an API on its own behalf or user's behalf, and the call is constrained to the scope of an authorized request. 
And note that in Salesforce, whenever we talk about OAuth 0, OAuth 2.0, it's not just only authorization, but it's also authentication that Salesforce adds on top of it. So the reason why we are discussing OAuth 2.0 authentication or authorization is that's the primary configurations that we are going to do it through our connected apps in Salesforce. So let's look into OAuth 2.0. Now the OAuth 2.0 defines four different roles that are involved in authorization request. The first role is user or the resource owner. A user or other entity that owns protected resources at the resource server. So in this case, you know, the user will be uh, the Salesforce user. The next is the client application. So a client application will need access to the data from the resource server. The next thing is the resource server. The resource server is a service that's storing the protected resources that needs to be accessed by the application. And lastly, the authorization server. So any request that goes to the resource server, if it's not authorized, it delegates authentication and authorization to the authorization server. And the authorization server redirects the user so that the user can authenticate and grant access. On successful authentication and access grant, you will see that a token will be issued to the client application which they can use to access data from the resource server. So what I have on the slide here is an example of how this OR 2.0 flow will work from, let's say, a Salesforce mobile app. So when you open the Salesforce mobile app, you know, you will see an authentication prompt. You enter your username and password. So on successful authentication, it basically initiates the OAuth authorization flow. So once you grant access, Salesforce sends the mobile app access and the refresh tokens upon successful validation of the user and the app. Now let's understand SSO and SAML 2.0. Again, we are trying to understand all the terminology here before we actually go into connected apps and explore the settings that are provided by this and explore the settings that are provided by the Salesforce. So single sign-on is the ability to log in once and then access protected resources or application with the same authentication requirements without requiring one to re-enter credentials. So let's imagine you have Salesforce and four more applications that you want to access from your computer. Now having to remember username and password for all those applications is something that's that's not going to be easy and not convenient or optimal. So you can use an identity provider where you can use the username and password. You can use, you can just authenticate once to one of these system and then you can use the same authentication to log into different applications. Now in the single sign on, there are two things that you need to understand. One is identity provider and the other one is service provider. Now identity provider is a trusted service that enables users to access external applications without logging in again. Now Salesforce can also act as an identity provider or you might have something like Okta in your corporate environment which can act as an identity provider or it could be any other identity provider um, that you might be using. Now a service provider is essentially a service that accepts identity on behalf of that external application from an identity provider. So your service provider can be Salesforce or let's say you're using Gmail, the Gmail can be um, service provider or let's say you have any other application that you're accessing. So those can be service provider. So it's any any application. A service provider is essentially an any application that accepts identity on behalf of uh, the external application from the IDP. All right, now let's take a look at SAML 2.0. So again, SAML 2.0 is an industry standard. It's a framework for exchanging security information between the business partners. 
So it enables apps to delegate authentication to identity provider and then identity provider essentially authenticates and returns an assertion with the details of user and the authentication event. So we will definitely deep dive into SAML 2.0 in our upcoming sessions. All right, so before we move further, let's look at some of the use cases for the connected apps. So the first use case is you want to access data with API integrations. So let's say you have Salesforce and external application that's outside Salesforce platform, and you want to securely access data from Salesforce. Connected apps can be used and configured for that. The next use case is, let's say you want to integrate all the service providers within your Salesforce R. That is, you want to use Salesforce as an identity provider for uh, your SAML 2.0. So those type of configurations, configuring SSO, use cases, you know, you will need a connected app and uh, we'll, we'll walk you through how to set that up in uh, upcoming uh, sessions. The other use case is managing access to third party apps. So as an admin, you can install or uninstall or block connected apps and you can access, you can control the access of these applications by uh, profiles or permission sets or IP ranges. We'll take a look at it when we actually configure the connected apps. The other use case, and this is uh, the recent additions to the usage of connected apps, is you can provide authorization for external API gateways. That means uh, you know you can you can have a connected app. So let's say you have an external service and you do not want to manage authorizations of that service on that server, you can use Salesforce to manage that. You can define custom scopes, you can dynamically register child connected apps and manage the authorizations for that external service directly from Salesforce. We will also take a look at this in our upcoming sessions on how to use Salesforce connected apps to um, provide authorizations for external API gateways. Let's say you have a service on a mule soft, you can use Salesforce to just control the authorizations for um, any application accessing that service. All right, so now let's get on to some hands-on work and let's start creating connected apps in the Salesforce environment. All right, so I'm in my Salesforce environment here and you can actually start creating a connected app by using App Manager. So we can come to App Manager and just create a new connected app. So currently in my instance, I do not have any connected app. Otherwise, it would show up here as an app type of connected app. Now, before I create, I want you to also pay attention to a couple of things here. So when you type connected apps in the setup, you will also see manage connected apps and connected app usage. So there might be other connected apps that might be using um, your Salesforce environment. For example, Salesforce CLI. Salesforce CLI is a connected app that I've used here to log into this environment. So as you can see, there is one um, login that has happened here and you can actually see that I have logged in um, and you know how many times I've logged in and you know as an admin you can even revoke access to uh, a specific connected app and the other thing to note is if you also go to manage connected apps it will show you all the connected apps that are there in your system And one of the misconceptions with connected app is usually we think that the connected app that we create in this environment can only be used for this specific R, uh, but that's, that's a misconception. And you can use the connected app so that it, you can connect to any Salesforce environment. It just uses the consumer key. Um, and then you can really construct an um, URL where you can actually log into it will land you to Salesforce login page where you can enter the username and credentials and you will be able to authorize the, the specific Salesforce app and you'll be able to access resources from that. So connected app is uh, not tied to that specific environment. All right, 
So now let's create connected app in this environment. So I'll go back to the app manager here and start creating connected app. So let's call our connected app Trailhead Live. Trailhead Live. And let me put my email as the contact email and my phone number. So this settings, like for example, logo image URL or icon URL and the description. So this is what it will be displayed to the end user from the app launcher. So let's say this particular connected app is sort of installed in the Salesforce environment. You should see an another application for that connected app and it will display the, the, the logo and the, the descriptions that are here. We looked into the protocols in our presentations here. You can enable OAuth settings to allow external applications to use authorizations from Salesforce and securely access data. And similarly, you can enable SAML so that this uh, Salesforce environment can act as um, the identity provider. We are not going to go into the SAML configurations in this session, maybe in upcoming sessions. And we'll also not deep dive into these handler classes or custom app handlers. And we'll also not look into mobile app settings in this uh, uh, part of the webinar. So let's just focus our thing on enabling OAuth settings. So you can enable OAuth settings and there are different types of OAuth flows. Um, one of them is device flow and this is what it's used for. Um, there are different things like JWT, token flow, or web um, based flow, or the native agent flow. We'll not go into details of those flow. We'll just focus on a simple uh, web server flow. Now it'll ask you for the callback URL and note that this is the, the redirect URL where you will be landed once you successfully sort of authenticate. In my case, I just want to put a, a simple URL here called say my local host and on 8084. So essentially what I'm saying is after like the authentication, navigate back to this specific URL. Now this could be uh, you know URL of your external service from where you are trying to access uh, or authorize the Salesforce. Now this might be in in the external service use case. This might be URL for let's say you know if you're trying to build your web app, this will be the pay URL of the web app page where you want to land after the authentication happens. We'll take a look at that. And also there are scopes. Now scopes are very important and one should pay attention to understand everything in the scope because these define the privileges. So in our use case, let's say, you know, we want to provide full access. So we'll come into all the other settings um, in our next sessions. But uh, for this session, let's just restrict us, you know, configuring a simple connected app with a full access scope. I will shortly discuss the, the usage of the scopes here and what these are for. There is a documentation for this. So, so let's just save this. So one thing you will notice is it's gonna take two to 10 minutes for the changes to take effect on the server. That's fine, we can continue with our slides and come back here. So let's say continue. And now notice that it's gonna give us the consumer key and then a secret that we can use to connect. We will discuss about these um, shortly. So currently this is gonna take two to 10 minutes to take into effect. So let's just give some time to it and we can continue with the slides. So let's, Let's say, uh, let's try to distinguish, you know, what a connected app developer does versus what a connected app admin does. So a connected app developer essentially might be a Salesforce developer or an ISV who is building API integrations with Salesforce. 
Now they can provide you a managed package which has the connected app which you can install or it could be just someone creating the connected app so that they can provide the consumer keys and and the other information like redirect URL that you can use from external apps to actually reach into Salesforce. So one of the things to notice is as a developer, you can build a connected app for your org. You can not only build for your org, but also for other Salesforce org and the other Salesforce orgs can install it and use it. Now connected app admin. So connected app admin has the power to sort of install, uninstall or block connected app from the Salesforce org. So as an admin, you can always visit the app usage and see who is trying to access your app, your application, and you can proactively block them if you feel that you know this is not right, or you can revoke the tokens. Also, an admin explicitly can define who can use these connected apps, and they can add permissions and profiles, and also uh, configure IP relaxations. Uh, for these connected apps. So let's take a look at some of these settings. So I have this connected app and then I can easily manage. So when I go to manage, so now as you can see, when I go to manage connected apps, I can easily see my app. So currently I have the configuration saying all users may self authorize. Now let's look at the options that I have here. All right, so while managing it, you can actually control certain things. For example, you can edit the policies and configure. For example, you can say admin approved users are pre-authorized. So when you select this and provide access to the profiles or permission sets, they do not have to self-authorize it. While here it says all users may self-authorize. So we'll take a look at what that means. Also here, I have IP relaxation settings. Now I have enforced IP restrictions, meaning uh, you know if there are IP restrictions, it's gonna just allow to actually, um, so only those IPs will be allowed to reach into Salesforce. So I can configure different uh, configurations here depending on what I need. Relax is most um, uh, you know permissive while enforce is most restrictive. We, we should start with most restrictive. So let's start with enforce IP restriction. Also you can enable this high assurance session required which means you can block this application or raise the session level to high assurance which means uh, you know they will be asked for the user credentials again and you know you can even say that you block this application so um, any suspicious session will be blocked let's um, not select that also you can enable user provisioning now we're going to skip this for time being but note that this will make sure that you can automatically provision users on Salesforce if this setting is checked. Now all these things can be managed at the org level. So let's just go with the settings that we have now. All right, now let's take a look at OAuth tokens and scopes. Uh, you can find this on our documentation. I'm gonna share the links for the documentation that I'm referring here. Uh, it's there on our help.salesforce.com. Uh, but you'll find that the OAuth tokens, there are essentially three different tokens. Now I'm not gonna cover ID token for today um, or the asset tokens. Um, and we can cover that in, in the upcoming sessions, but let's, let's cover on authorization code. So authorization code is basically a short lived token. And this is after the first successful authentication. So I will show you how I can, you know, sort of uh, get this token so once you have the authorization code you know then you can use the access token basically you can request for an access token using the authorization code that is after a client is sort of authorized you know the salesforce sends the client an access token right so now this token right has a life um, associated with it and you know after that 
live which you can configure in the session session settings here so if you go to session settings you can uh, basically say till what extent you want to have this session for so in in my case my the timeout value is two hours but you know you can have a short duration from let's say 15 minutes to 24 hours right so based on that you know the session sort of expires um so one thing we recommend is you know make sure that when you are using this token you're actually uh you know able to protect this token by using protocols such as tls or ssl now a lot of times this token expires and you need a more long-lived token which is your refresh token so refresh token is basically a long-lived token it's like a password so it also needs to be sort of securely stored and then you can use the refresh token to kind of request for the the new token so new access token so you use the refresh token to sort of obtain the new access token so we will just use postman now and see um, and work work this all out in you know in a short while so okay so now i think our connected app must be sort of ready so let's see if we can use the connected app that we created to execute a simple web server auth flow and see how we can get the authorization code and uh, you know get the access token and see the refresh token etc also the other thing i want you to pay attention to is the oauth scopes so i discussed that when we were configuring uh, the connected app here one of the things that we saw was it asked for the scope so when i was creating the connected apps so we can again go to app manager so you go to app manager and find that connected app so when i was creating this connected app one of the things um, that i was asked was to configure this oauth scopes now every scope has its own um, access now every scope has its own meaning so uh, the documentation is handy here so for example access dot services allows us to access dot api on behalf of the user similarly we have access and manage your data which allows us to you know access the apis the rest apis and the bulk apis of the salesforce and and then we can there is a there is an access for chatter api and there is access for custom permissions for that connected app full access that's what we selected here now the full access means it allows access to all the data by the logged in user um, and has all the scopes essentially all the scopes like you get uh, the basic information um, you can perform requests now one thing to note is full doesn't return a refresh token so that means you must explicitly request the refresh token scope to get a refresh token okay so that's one key thing to note with full access you do not get a refresh token you must explicitly refresh or you must explicitly request the refresh token so we will see now how we can do this um, thing All right now one more thing to note is we have documentation for every flow here so we have documentations around the web server flow the user agent flow the the jwt flow the device token flow asset flow so we have different flows and uh, you know we'll we'll go through them um, in our in our series the the series that we have started on connected apps uh, but for now let's just focus only on web server flow so on a web server flow you know you can essentially use the client id and provide the redirect uri with the response type of code so the response type in or2 is the grant type that the connected app requests so this value must be code uh, to indicate that it is requesting an authorization code right so so let's just try to basically execute this so i'm gonna just copy this onto the so i'm gonna copy this onto the notepad now one thing i will change is the the client id right and the redirect url right so let's just change this so for our trailhead so for our trailhead 
application let's just uh, let's just view this so for the trailhead right the consumer key is this one I'm gonna copy the the client ID which is the consumer key and then the the redirect URI uh, the redirect URI in this case is this one okay so all right all right so now let's just put this in an incognito window so that we can see the authorization uh, flow and the dance so I put it here and then we see so it takes me to the the login dot salesforce.com as expected now this could be now let's say you are building an external application so in that scenario what you will do is you will essentially say login.salesforce.com and so essentially you'll basically redirect your users to this url and where you will ask for the username and password and once it sort of gives the authorization code you can use that code to sort of request the the token the access token and then you know uh, request the refresh token so so let's see how we can actually achieve all of these okay so all right so i'm here now i need the username and password of the org that i was working with i am put the username and the password of the org that i was working with all right so i can put the username here and then put the password and then i am logged in it's gonna ask for the verification key. Let me see if I can find my phone to get the verification key. All right, so I'm gonna key in the verification code and then verify it. So look at this. So one thing to pay attention in this screen is that this is the name of the connected app. And then you see it provides, it tells me that, you know, hey, the, the application will is asking you to authorize that this application is going to access your basic information from salesforce it's going to access your data it's going to access your data via the web it's going to access your chatter data so these are essentially all the scopes because i declared as full that means now you can so it's very important that if you have a an application and you're using OAuth and you get a get the screen a lot of times as a as a consumer of the application you just say allow but do take some time to read through everything that is written here because essentially this means that you are giving the permission that on your behalf it's going to use your access to get some data from the Salesforce now in this case i know that i am the one who created this application and i want to say okay you know uh, let uh, this application that i have access all these details so let's say allow here now you will see notice that there is a code that is provided here now this code now because i don't have any server running at this local host you know, I'm not doing anything, but really in your application, what you should do is you should use this code that you get here and make an HTTP request to exchange this code and get the access token. So I'm gonna use a uh, postman to actually use this code and see how I can access um, using this code, how I can make an HTTP call to get the access token. So let's see that in action now. So you can download the Postman. So you can go to the postman.com slash downloads and download the Postman. Postman does very handy to make um, API calls to uh, any external uh, API provider and test your APIs. This is a really handy tool. So you can download it depending on your operating system. Uh, so I have the, the Postman download. So once we have the web, code or the auth code we're gonna use uh, we're gonna make a call to get the access token so to make a call to the access token we will have to post to services slash or to slash token endpoint 
with the grant type as authorization code and the code will be the authorization code that we have and the client id and the client secret now you can skip the secret provided you have unchecked required secret for web server flow in my uh, connected app today i have it checked so that means uh, you know um, you know i need to provide that secret now you can click on here to reveal it and copy uh, and then uh, we need the redirect URI. So in this uh, scenario, our redirect URI is um, the local host. All right, so let's configure the postman so that we can execute this call and see that we have a valid access token on our end. Now to do that, um, you know, I'm gonna say a new, so notice that, you know, the postman provides different options here in this, scenario it will be a post call now it's a post call to https um, login.salesforce.com that's our access token server or let's say the authorization server in OAuth terms and then i need um, i essentially need um, the slash services slash one slash token um, so that's the URL. Okay. Um, now, also I will need the key. Right. So the key. So in this case, I can say, I can just say my headers or the body will be of X WW form URL encoded because this is a form URL encoded um, request. All right, so now we need grant type as authorization code. So the grant type will be the authorization code. So let's just put in that. We can also use content type. So content type is, I'm gonna say the content type is application slash, sorry. Um, okay so let's see so in this scenario okay so where are we so the content type is url encoded and then we have grant type which is authorization code and then we have code the code will be the code that is here. Now it's been long since I've executed this one, right? So it might have expired. So let me just go through the, the flow again. So let's just, let's just put the, the URL here. This should give us the the auth code. So here's our auth code. Now, one thing you will notice is this is URL encoded. So we need to decode to make sure um, we are using the right. Now you can use URL decoder here and you know decode it. Now I'm gonna use that as my code. Okay, so also you will need the client ID and the client secret. So client ID, again, client ID, you can get it from here. Just copy the handy new copy button. Um, the consumer secret, I'm just gonna put it here. Um, it should say consumer secret like this. And then finally we have redirect URI. Now I'm going to use redirect URI and then just going to put the redirect URI of the of the connected app. All right. So now once I have all these details filled in, I should be able to make a post request and see a successful response with access token. All right. Let's send it. So now as expected, we see the access token. Now we can use this access token to sort of um call any rest apis of salesforce um, and uh, also it's going to give us some more information like when it is issued at um, the scope the scope that we requested the signature 
the ID token. So we're not going to talk about this today, but in the future sessions, I'll talk about what is the ID token. Um, and then the domain or the instance URL and uh, uh, you know the token type which is the bearer in this case so we have uh, um, the required access token here all right now to request refresh token we'll have to do um, one modification that is we go to manage connected apps and go to the trailhead live connected app that i had created previously uh okay all right not here we'll go to we'll go to apps from the app manager and then i'm gonna edit the the trailhead live app that i created and here i need to add perform request on your behalf at any time scope which provides me access to refresh token and offline access scopes so i need that um, and then I'm going to save. So as highlighted here, it's going to take some time for this to take into effect. Uh, but let's see what happens if I try to pass in the scope parameter. So what I have here, as you can see, is I have the same URL, but this time I also have the scope parameter added. And this time I'm specifying that I'm also uh, need the auth code which will also give me the refresh token so i specify the the scope also one parameter that we can add is the state now state will let you put uh, values that you can later retrieve so when the oauth authorization is successful you will see the state value sort of uh, coming in the url and this could be handy if you want to send something some data across the wire so for example here in this case let's say i'm more than abc and let's see what happens so i'm going to copy this and go to the incognito window and execute this so because i'm already logged in it's saying you know it wants to access all these details and i'm going to say allow okay now i have the the code and notice that this time i also have the state so i've passed in the scope here um the refresh token in the full all right so i have the the auth code now i can use this auth code to um i'm gonna url decode it again i use uh, a little utility online here uh, just to decode the URL so I'm just gonna decode this all right so um, so now let's make a request to the postman again um, all right so this time we have the code let's put the code back in here um, we have the client ID the client secret we have the grant type now the grant type can be um, all right, so the grant type I think should be the authorization um, code as uh, we did previously. So I'm gonna just say authorization code. So look at this time. So this time I also have the refresh token retrieved uh, apart from the access token. So so the key thing to understand is if you need refresh token use the scope value and pass the refresh token and the full and uh, you know you can pass in the state that's optional if you know that just gets passed back or called back you know when the authentication is successful um, uh, but yes so this is the thing and also remember not to pass anything sensitive information in the state because it's just uh, going through your browser and you know somebody can um, basically read these values um, okay okay so now we have explored how to get access token and the refresh token um, and other details let's uh, uh, let's get back to our presentation here 
Now, before I actually move on to the other items, I also want to show you uh, something in ARG um, to see what, um, you know, how we are accessing it, right? So to do that, I have to log into the ARG. So let's get back to the ARG. Logging into the org here. So let's look at some of the admin settings once again um, and make sure that um, the the count is incrementing and we are able to see our usage. So if I go to the connected app usage. So let's take a look at the connected app usage. So as you can see, you know, I've used this connected app to sort of, um, you know, used with my user. And then I have established some initial connections and it says uh, my use count is this. Now, if you want to revoke the session, you can revoke it from here. Um, we don't need to at this point, uh, but this easily allows you to sort of monitor the usage list of this um, specific connected app okay let's look at some of the key considerations when deploying connected apps so one of the key consideration is you cannot set the consumer key in metadata api that means you when you retrieve it it's just retrieved for informational purposes but if you try to move the connected app to the metadata api to another arg you will have to remove the consumer key from the zip file before uh, the deployment to an arc. Now a new key will be generated in the destination arc. Similarly, you will find that there are things that are not supported today in chain sets, for example, mobile settings that are there on the connected app. Also note that you cannot add a connected app to an unmanaged package or an unlocked package. Now, as you can see, uh, you know, as I already said, you know, there are different ways to actually log into the connected app. So as so initially I talked about how some of the, the applications that are there use this connected app. For example, the workbench has its own connected app that it uses to sort of authenticate into Salesforce. So for example, let me log into the org. So let's say I log into the org. So as you can see, you know, I just authorized Workbench so that it can access um, the, the data from my ARC. So now this uh, Workbench is hosted um, somewhere outside Salesforce. Um, but let's see the, uh, the, the usage. So when I actually refresh the connected app usage, it will quickly reflect that there is a Workbench connected app um, that is using this. Now I can easily block or install this. Now installing this will allow me to control the security policy. So I'm going to install because I can control the security policy of uh, the connected app. It's going to take some time to, to allow to install. So let me give it some time so that it actually installs and then I'll show you how you can configure security policies via your permission set and the profiles. Okay so as you can see this is this is installed now right so I can have this option of managing policies now there are certain things I can do here. So for example, I, as I said, we can control its IP relaxations or restrictions. And also we can say admin approved users are pre-authorized and I can make sure to add some profiles and permission sets. So these profiles and permission sets will be automatically authorized. So now in this case, let's say that I do not have any profiles and permission sets, even as an admin, it will not let me in. So let's just try that. So I am going to log out of um, this. 
gonna log out to the workbench and try to log in again to the org Just trying to log in again to the org so now you can see I'm not being able to access it so I get the OAuth app access denied exception now this is simply because I changed my policy to say only admin approved users are pre-authorized okay so now I can provide the access to my system admin profile and then it should let me in so now I provided the access so let's just verify by logging in again so this time it will surely let me in so as you can see now it, it let me in so as an admin of your connected app you have ability to sort of see what connected apps your um, org is sort of using um, who are the users who are actually using it when are they using it and what sort of applications they are is it part of is it installed in your org or they are just um, applications um, that are not installed um, so for security purposes uh, you know if you think that the application um, requires some strict governance uh, in terms of permission sets and profiles what you can do is you can just uh, install them and then once you install them you can set their um, application policies okay also one thing that um, I missed and I want to cover is you know the the web server flow also has um, the web server flow also supports HTTP basic authentication scheme meaning what you can do is you can take the client ID and the client secret and um, sort of concatenate with um, the colon in between uh, and then you can base 64 encode and send it as an authorization header now I do not uh, sort of uh, recommend this um, uh, this uh, you know because uh, if you send something in the body that's um, that's the preferred way uh, but you can also use this um, thing and this here is an example here just to show you the use case all although here um, the example doesn't sort of show you that it is all base 64 encoded uh, but you can quickly try this out um, just like how I tried the the original um, example just basically you can um, concatenate both the client ID and the client secret with a colon in between base 64 encode and send it as an authorization header uh, and post to the the token URL uh, with uh, the other parameters like grant type and uh, encode and redirect URL all right so i want to leave you with um, some references now this is a part of the series that i want to do for um, august and september where we will deep dive into um, other aspects of connected apps like um, using it for asset token flow or device token flow or for jwt um, and then we will also uh, cover some of uh, the settings for uh, saml 2.0 um, and also uh, uh, you know we will cover um, details around um, handler classes uh, that you can use uh, in your connected apps uh, so those type of things we'll we'll keep covering but here are some of the references um, you can actually go to the connected apps in our help.salesforce.com where uh, we have uh, documented every settings that are there on the connected app uh, you can also uh, look at a uh, different type of uh, auth flows that we support in fact the salesforce cli uses uh, the same OAuth uh, two uh, flows that are documented there um, there are some flows like web auth you know using uh, jwt or device based authentication uh, flows so all those flows are documented and uh, you know finally there are a couple of trailhead modules um, that you want to um, do one of them is very basic but um, it still gives you um, a basic idea of uh, all the settings that are possible through the connected app um, and then there is a small little project on how to create a connected app 
all right with that i want to take some time and thank you so much for joining me today i hope you like the session if you have any feedback about this session or any other topics that you want uh, us to cover uh, on trailer live please do um, uh, let us know my twitter handle is at mshwasa13 um, so thank you again and uh, looking forward to uh, the upcoming um, series uh, and the sessions thank you so much